Hey, this is Price from Mini Motors USA. I'm going to walk you through a storm controller replacement today. Um, not too bad of a job, it does take a lot of time, so just be prepared for that. So to start off, I'm just going to give you a rundown of the tools you'll need. You'll need a good set of Allen tools. It's really important that you have like a nice set. We like Weehaws here. Um, just make sure they're good square tools. Um, so for Allen tools, you'll need a two and a half millimeter, three millimeter, a four millimeter, and a long four, and a five millimeter. Um, you also need an 18 millimeter socket, um, razor, a pick tool, some electrical tape, some wire cutters, and cable ties. I already have a head start. I took the battery out of the compartment um, and took the screws out of the perimeter of the deck. Um, those are the four millimeter Allen tool. Then that allows you to lift that up. Then you can slide the uh, battery cable out of the side there and just set that to the side. First screws you want to hit are these kicktail bracket mounting screws on either side. Use the four millimeter Allen tool. I have those kicktail mounting screws out on both sides. So now I'm going to hit the uh, kicktail screws and again the four millimeter Allen tool. Once you have those kicktail mounting screws out, kicktail will be free. Um, lay something down on the deck to protect the grip tape. Just kind of rest it on there and then I'll free up your uh, kicktail bracket mounting screws. They're through these holes just down here. It's where the long four comes in. Get those right there. With the dust caps off on either side, um, reveals the motor mounting screws. So you're gonna want to hit those next with a five millimeter Allen tool. Once you have those four screws out of each side, um, the motor will be free, but you need to loosen up these suspension block screws with the 18 millimeter socket. Just be careful. Once you start loosening these up, the motor is gonna fall. So have something underneath it to kind of catch it. Next, you need to remove this dust cap. Um, it's really tight on this wire, so I use Goo Gone just to make it slide a little easier on the motor wire. So disconnect this JST, then you'll need a 2.5 millimeter Allen tool to hit the quick disconnect mounting screws. Once you take the quick disconnect out, just set the motor to the side, then you're going to need to get the front motor off. Pretty much the same process, just a couple extra steps. You need to pop this uh, footboard cover off with a 4 millimeter Allen tool. Then you'll need a 2.5 millimeter Allen tool to remove the footboard PCB. Take note of how these wires are routed behind the footboard PCB. Um, just make sure they go in the same way they're coming out. Once you remove the wire wrap from the motor wire, there will be some tape holding the wires together. So just take that off and then the process for dropping the front motor will be the same as the back. Once you have both the motors dropped down, you're gonna to need to deal with the wiring. First thing is this battery cable. Um, there's heat shrink covering the gold connectors, so just take a razor and cut that heat shrink off. Just be careful to not cut too deep in, into the actual wire. Next you want to get rid of all these zip ties that are holding these cables together. At this point you're going to want to get your new controller in place and hook up the new wires. You're going to want to do a one-to-one -one replacement for each wire, so just unplug each wire from the scooter side and plug in your new connections. Um, there are a few wires that you're not just going to be able to unplug and plug back in. Um, one of those is coming out of the multi-switch. It's this small purple wire right here. You're going to need to get that wire out and plug it into your new controller side JST, which is this single white side. Um, to do that, 
I'm going to grab a pick. There's a small metal tab that sits on top of the uh, pin here. Okay. So yeah. just slide your pick in on top of that metal tab and just kind of push that tab down. And then your wire should just slide out the back there. Just like that. So then you have this tab, and you're just going to want to pull that tab back up to like a 45 degree angle so that you can slide it into your new controller JST. And it should just click right into place, and then you can re clip that back in. The scooter side. Not too bad. Then you're going to need to do a similar process for your brake cutoffs, but it's a different tab. So you can actually see the tab on this side. You just push the tab down, the pick, slide that wire out. Actually, it's the red side, right? So, um, you're looking at a rear fork issue. There we go. And there's two of those, one for each brake cutoff. So just get that tab back up. And slide it into your new controller JST. And then connect your brake cutoff. Once you get your wiring all figured out, um, pretty much just a matter of putting the scooter back together. Um, so you want to just like get your wires all like about where you're going to want them. Um, and you can start zip tying stuff back together and then um, putting the motors back on and getting the kicktail mounted. Get your front motor in place, get your quick disconnect reconnected and then your quick disconnect mounting screws go in. Once you have the quick disconnect screws in there, you want to slide this dust cap down. Just be sure that this tab lines up with the other side. When you're attaching your motor, make sure your tab is facing down. Um, just going to slide it back up into the arms and then forward screws on either side. At this point, you can remount your caliper. Um, once you have it mounted, just make sure the rotor passes through nicely. Um, and then you can get the uh, dust caps back on.